Hello underwater friends, in this video I'm gonna give you some tips on how to make great underwater macro photography. So first of all, what is macro photography? Well, macro photography is taking pictures of animals or subjects that will have at the end a ratio of 1 to 1. So first we'll talk about the equipment, then we'll talk about the subject, their behavior and how difficult it is to take pictures of them. Then we'll talk about the composition, the settings, and finally, I'll give you some tips on shooting techniques. So wait until the end, like this you'll know everything. Oh, and by the way, Bali is reopened. So if you want to come visit us, don't hesitate. I will put a link in the description. And if you want to come see us in proof diving, you can do fun dives, photography with a great spotter, or even take a class with me. So first for the equipment, the two, actually three good options are point and shoot. You can also use DSLR or mirrorless. I don't recommend you to use action cams because normally they're not made for macro and close subjects. You will also need strobes. One can be okay, but two is even better. And a focus light that will help you make the focus and have a sharp image. When using DSLR and mirrorless, you need a macro lens, of course. So it can be two kinds. One is a 60 millimeter, which is gonna be quite wide, but can allow you to be very close to your subject, minimum like 10 centimeters, or a longer one that will go depending on the brand from 90 to 105 or something thing like this that won't allow you to go so close but will make super nice macro. So the 60 millimeter will be great for mid-sized animal or even close ones because you can go very close to your subject but you have more flexibility. When using the 90 or the 105 it's very good if you want to take pictures of shy animals or very small ones. But be careful, the bigger magnification you have, the more difficult it's gonna be to lock on your subject, and especially if it's a moving one, to lock on your subject and follow it when you want to take your picture. Of course, DSLR and mirrorless are the best option because they have a very good autofocus, so you can really decide which point you want to be sharp and then take your picture and 95 or more percent of it, it's gonna work and make a super sharp picture. When using a compact camera or a point and shoot, what you want to do is to zoom all the way to the optical zoom, of course, put it on macro settings and then just take your pictures and enjoy. Depending on the animal you want to take, the behavior and how fast they are moving is gonna make it easier or difficult. So I recommend at first to take pictures of animals that don't move at all or subject in general or things that move very slowly, nudie brand, small crabs, small shrimps, that's gonna be the best to start. Then the second level, kind of, is gonna be animals that move, but move around something. Like for example, a clownfish will move, but will always stay around the anemone. So if you stay in a good position, you can wait for him to come back and do a great composition with the animal where you want it. The most challenging will be to take pictures of animals that move a lot and that stay in midwater everywhere and then you will have to be more patient, find your location, find a good composition and then take the shot when the animal comes. Now let's talk about the composition. So first of all, one of the worst things to do is to take pictures from above, okay? It doesn't work. Most of the time your subject is going to be very flat and it's not going to be nice. I will give you some advice on compositions and different techniques, but they don't always work. It depends what kind of subject you have, what kind of feeling you want to give to your picture, and then you will decide where it is nice and how it's gonna make the best picture. One of the important things when you want to do pictures of animal is to leave what we call lead room. So in the direction where the animal is looking, you want to leave more space. If the picture stops right after the eye and there is no space where the animal is looking, it's gonna feel tight and it won't look so nice. Rule of third is one of the important things to know. It doesn't always work, but it's a good thing to know. What you want to do for the rule of third is you want to cut your image in nine rectangles. You will want to try to put the important things at the intersections. So the most important one normally is the one on the top left side, and that's where you want, for example, the eye or your animal there. Think about your background. Many times it's gonna be nicer to have water as a background. So many times what you want to do is to go very low and shoot from below looking up like this, 
the water background will make a good contrast with your animal. If not, anyways, you want to look at a nice background or something that will be with nice colors if it's blurry and then it's going to make it pop as well. In most situations, you don't want to be on the side or facing the animal too much. Three quarters seems to be the best and that's the way you're going to have the most volume. You want to focus on the eye. 90% of the time, you want to focus on the eye and that's what's going to make it very nice. With a small number aperture most of the picture will be blurry and the eye will pop out because it's very sharp with shrimps and crabs it's even more because there is like a dimension in the eyes you want to give your subject room to breathe meaning that you want to leave enough space around your animal to have a contrast between the animal and the background of course sometimes you want to take details of animals and it doesn't apply but if it's a shrimp a crab a nudie branch it's always good to have some background because the contrast between between the foreground and the background will make it nicer. Symmetry also can work super good. If you have lines, you want to place them in positions where it looks good. One of the things that I use all the time as well is angles. So find angles and make a nice composition with it. But like I said, the most important, do not shoot your animal from above, okay? Spend a little energy, look at the composition, find the best place, and then take your picture. For the technique, it's quite simple. For me, I always try to use a single point. I'm lucky because with my camera, I have a flexible point. So I put it where I want the eye to be. Then I focus on the eye and the rest will be blurry, depending on what I want. With compact camera, you may not be able to do this, so most likely what you will want to do is make the focus on the eye by pressing halfway the button and then move the camera and press all the way. For the speed, I usually use 1 over 125. It's fast enough because the subjects are not moving too much and it gives me room for the rest of the settings. For the aperture, most of the time, I will use the widest aperture possible, which means f1.8, f2.8, actually a small f number. Like this, my subject will be sharp and the rest will be blurry. So again, nice contrast. For the shooting techniques, you will have mainly two options. One is going to be in mid-water, when you want to shoot fish that are moving in midwater, of course. And then the other one will be at the bottom when you want to take pictures of animals that stay at the bottom or close to the bottom. If you're in midwater, it's very important to have a good or an excellent buoyancy. You want to stay in one place and not move when you shoot. Even if you're in midwater, you want to find a good location where the background will be nice, where everything will be okay. Wait for your animal to come and then take your picture. It's really good to follow the fish because otherwise you're going to take pictures of tails only and that's not what you want. You don't want to scare the animal either so by staying in one place they're going to be curious enough to come see you and then you can shoot. When taking pictures from animals that are close to the bottom you will need to get at the bottom and you have to make sure that you don't damage anything. Make sure that it's sand area with nothing to damage, nothing to bother and then you can stay at the bottom. A good tool that can help also for those kind of shots is a tripod. So what you want to do is put your camera in the right place with a tray at least you behind it and all of it need to be negatively buoyant meaning sinking at the bottom and then put your elbows in the sand your body as well like this you will have more steady points and it will help you not to move and not to shake i hope this was helpful and don't hesitate also to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button i'll see you next time happy bubbles